One of the masters of complication watchmaking, Audemars Piguet has a unique expertise in the field of chiming watches. AP is one of the very few companies to craft grand sonneries. One of the brand's latest creation even adds or incorporates their super sonnerie concept into a grand sonnerie. This exceptional watch also features enamel dials, masterfully crafted by Anita Porsche. We're meeting with Michael Friedman, who will tell us about the Grand Sonnerie Carillon Super Sonnerie Code 1159. We need to look at what the British called the Grand Sonnerie watch to really dive into the definition of what it is. Historically, they referred to the Grand Sonnerie as the clock watch. What does a clock do exactly? A clock is telling you the time, but it's also striking the time without any interaction from a user whatsoever. It has an automated striking device, just like those very first clocks. So you hear the passage of time at the hour and at the quarter hour. This automated striking mechanism is the basis behind the Grand Sonnerie and why the British refer to it as the clock watch. This is the principal differentiation of a repeater to a Grand Sonnerie or a clock watch. On a repeater, you have to actively slide the lever or press a push piece to hear the time, whereas on a Grand Sonnerie or a clock watch, you have that option, but you're also going to hear the watch strike on its own autonomously when it's on the appropriate setting. What makes the Grand Sonnerie so technically challenging to produce and why so few watchmakers historically and today are able to produce them is it goes so far beyond a traditional minute repeater in terms of the number of components and the coordination required of the mechanism to accommodate all of those calculations. A minute repeater is already an immensely complex device, it needs to be programmed for 720 musical sequences. Now we're taking a minute repeater and adding a whole additional functionality to it of this automated striking mechanism. This is why the number of components goes up so much between a minute repeater and a grand sonore. And that's the essential element and the essential ingredient of why they're so complex and why they're so rare. Audemars Piguet's story of the Grand Sonnerie really begins right when the company is founded in 1875. According to the archives, we're already producing Grand Sonnerie watches by the early 1880s. The Grand Sonnerie at Audemars Piguet in the 1880s and 1890s, sometimes it was produced with no other complications, and other times it was part of larger format watches with additional complications, even beyond a grand complication. Not only were they very difficult to produce, but they were also incredibly expensive at the time. These were among the most expensive objects, not just watches, but objects that could be acquired before the turn of the century. The first Grand Sonore wristwatch doesn't emerge until the early 1990s, and it was created by one of the most respected and beloved watchmakers, and he's still very much active today, and that is the incredible Philippe Dufour. He introduced the first Grand Sonore wristwatch in 1992, I believe. A few years later is when Audemars Piguet arrived on the scene with our first Grand Sonore wristwatch. It was actually preceded by a Petite Sonore wristwatch in 1994, and then in 1996, if I recall correctly, the Grand Sonore wristwatch first makes its debut. Flash forward almost a decade and a half, and Audemars Piguet introduces the Super Sonore Minute Repeater back in 2015. Right when that project came to fruition, there was already the understanding from our leading watchmakers, technicians, and engineers, Giulio Poppi, Luca Raggi, and their teams, there was already that desire to bring together the Super Sonore technology with the Grand Sonore mechanism that we had developed in the 1990s. But it all had to be completely rethought and reimagined, but at least we had the two key ingredients to begin the journey. And by re-engineering, reimagining, and bringing these two worlds together, we were able to introduce recently the Grand Sonore Carry-On Super Sonore. Now there's a word in there that I haven't yet addressed, which is very important to talk about, the third word in there, carry-on. In watchmaking, this is referring to the fact that the watch has three hammers and three gongs. This is a very important differential from a minute repeater. A traditional minute repeater has two hammers and two gongs, whereas the Grand Sonore Carry-On Super Sonore has three hammers and three gongs. Those tonalities are introduced on the quarter hour. So instead of the bing bong you would hear on a repeater, you hear something that's much more melodic. Ba-ba-ba, ba-ba-ba. This 
additional note creates an audible representation of the time into a musical representation of time. The key technical element on the Super Sonore and the Grand Sonore carry-on Super Sonore, which contributes to that beautiful tone and resonance and even volume, but most importantly the purity of that sound, was the construction itself, which as mentioned was inspired by musical instruments. In a traditional repeater, you have the hammer and gongs mounted on the same frame as the movement itself. And all of the different metallurgical elements there can compete with that purity of sound. So taking the note of musical instruments, we relocated the gongs down onto the soundboard. So now the hammers are striking and the sound is being resonated without competition from the rest of the mechanism. The gongs and the soundboard are acting as the acoustic means for the transmission of that sound. And this is where that clarity and that purity and that resonance comes from. If you haven't seen one of these watches in person, it's, it's not about volume, it's how the sound carries. When we refer to these, to the role of the engineer and the technician in the Grand Sonore project, there's a couple different ways that we can uh, look at this. Of course, the development of the mechanism itself required computer modeling. Most movements in contemporary watchmaking today, the prototypes are done virtually before any actual prototype is produced. That's one of the many advantages of moving deeper and deeper into the digital age. We're able to virtually create these mechanisms and make sure that the concepts are going to be viable before we move into the actual prototyping phase. But beyond that, we also utilize advanced technologies after the creation of the watch sometimes, and for very interesting purposes. We were speaking earlier about the musicality and the tonality of these chiming mechanisms and these grand sonores. At Audemars Piguet, we're actively recording all of the sounds of each creation, and we're even sharing these sounds with the people who are ultimately acquiring the watches. We're doing it for a couple reasons. On one hand, yes, it's about quality control, and it's about making sure the tone and resonance are what they should be, but it's also about recording the thumbprint of that initial creation. Each one is going to be slightly different. So the beauty of handmade and hand-finished objects is we're not creating industrial works here. We're really creating the works of human beings, of talents, of hands, and of minds, and to be able to record those differences, as slight as they might be, becomes part of the historical record of those watches, and can be shared with clients. Now having said that, for those of you who have heard the Super Sonore, the watch resonates over very, very long distances, and the volume is quite strong. Traditionally, the Grand Sonore was meant to be a somewhat discreet complication. So like most Grand Sonores, there's a setting on the watch where if you want to reduce those sounds, which also is, of course, saving energy on the barrel, you have the option to turn the Sonore off or to shift it into petite sonore mode. For Audemars Piguet's Grand Sonore Carry-On Super Sonore, we actually simplified the petite sonore so it's only giving you the hour striking. Why does a Grand Sonore watch typically have two barrels, two winding barrels on it? This is all about energy. You need a lot of energy to fuel all of this chiming mechanism, and you can't disrupt the timekeeping aspect um, when you're activating the chime. This is essentially also why the Grand Sonore Carry-On Super Sonore has two barrels. It's a bi-directional winding system. So by winding in one direction, you're winding the spring for the chiming mechanism, and by winding in the other direction, you're winding up the spring for the timekeeping mechanism. We have only three watchmakers in the entire company that are crafting the Grand Sonore Carry-On Super Sonore. They're able to do one to two per year, depending on the timing and the pace, and each watch is customizable. Each watch can have elements of the decoration and the design, so the client can really be part of that journey in creating something special. For the first year and into this year, we've had the great honor of working with one of the most accomplished living enamelists, incredibly creative and passionate for her craft, Miss Anita Porsche.
So our clients have had the opportunity to acquire not only a Grand Sonore carry-on Super Sonore, but one with customized dial created through this incredibly talented individual and her atelier. During the development of the movement for the Grand Sonore Carry-On Super Sonore, like all development projects, we start to investigate what's the ideal form language, what's the ideal case to debut this new mechanism. If you remember, the Super Sonore back in 2015 was launched on concept together with Turbion. The Super Sonore then made its way to the Jules Odomar collection and then on to the Royal Oak collection. When we were looking at the possibilities of the Grand Sonore carry-on Super Sonore, we knew at that point that we were going to be working with an Anamalus even before we arrived at Anita Porsche, and we asked ourselves, what's the ideal canvas for an Anamalus to create their work? What dial do we want to work with? What form do we want to work with? How can we emphasize the dial and emphasize that craft in the best way possible so when you look at the watch, you're first drawn into the art, and then your eye is carried down to the rest of the watch, the case, the lines, the edges, and then ultimately all of those subtle details. And it was for these reasons why we chose to launch the Grand Sonore Carry-On Super Sonore within the Code 1159 collection. In terms of respecting the Enamelist and her work, as well as putting the emphasis on the dial as that first impact before discovering all the other subtleties of the watch, the Code 1159 collection was the ideal canvas to do so. As we were discussing earlier, the Grand Sonore Carry-On Super Sonore has a movement that is created by only one of three watchmakers here at Audemars Piguet in a dedicated atelier. It's really a specialty workshop within the company. These watches have 498 individual components, all of which will be entirely hand-finished by the watchmakers before being assembled, disassembled, reassembled, and disassembled, and finally tuned so the watch is upon completion. It is a real work of art and a work of passion in that sense. It's very, very critical to humanize the different individuals that work on these watches. So much of horology is industrial today, and there's nothing wrong with that. Industrial watchmaking is a big reality today. We have our own aspects of industrial machinery here at Audemars Piguet, but it's all the more reason on a watch that's crafted like this is to put the emphasis back on those few men and women who are doing this work by hand in very, very traditional ways. This is echoed at Audemars Piguet within the Grand Complication Workshop, now within the Grand Sonore Carry-On Super Sonore Workshop, as well as other ateliers throughout the company. It's about always establishing that balance between the traditional techniques and the emerging and more modern technologies along the way.